Welcome to your vinyasa. We will we'll actually begin seated today. So um, I like to bookend our practice with pranayama. I like to begin with pranayama and end with pranayama. I've been kind of doing one or the other. And I'd like us to have the experience of trying both beginning and ending. So find a comfortable seat. And um, doesn't have to be how I'm sitting, can, can be in any way that's comfortable to you. What I do recommend is that your knees are able to relax towards the floor a little bit. So always propping the sit bones up is, is helpful for me. And just start to relax the shoulders so you can start to feel them kind of relax down your back and then your ears over your shoulders, everything kind of aligning over the hips. So you're finding this central axis of the spine. Let's take a few moments here to close the eyes. Don't worry about controlling the breath just yet, but just notice how your breath feels, that natural inhale, natural exhale. Just acknowledging your physical body, what that feels like today. And your energetic state. Checking in. Okay, so our pranayama practice will be our three rounds of breath of fire with Surya Bedna in between. Surya Bedna again is closing left nostril, inhaling right, closing right nostril, exhaling left. Just one round of that in between breath of fire. We'll begin with breath of fire. We'll do that for about one minute and then cycle through three times. We'll inhale to begin. See if you can just focus your attention at your belly. Let that be the only thing that's really moving in your body. Five, four, three, two, one. Right hand up, crescents of the nose, closing left, inhaling right. Close right, exhale left. Release your right hand, inhale, breath of fire, round two. And it's okay if it's not continuous for one full minute. You need to take a break, swallow, just come right back to it when you're ready. Five, four, three, two, one. Round two, Surya Bedna, right hand up to the crescents of the nose. Close your left nostril, inhale right. 
close right, exhale left. Inhale to begin the last round, breath of fire. As much as you're able, continue to relax the jaw, the throat, the shoulders. Focus that breath at the belly. Five, four, three, two, one. Surya Bedna, close left, inhale right. Close right, exhale left. Let your eyes close if they're not already neutral breath in and out through both nostrils. Coming back to sensations and physical body, noticing the energetic state. Just pausing and becoming aware. This is a practice of becoming aware, of observing. <clears throat> we'll begin by warming up the head and the neck and the shoulders. Take the chin down to the chest. Breathe into the back of the neck. When you're ready, tilt the chin up towards the ceiling any amount. Breathe into the front of the throat. Feel the collarbone spread. And continue. Chin down and chin lift. You can link that movement with the breath. Or you can just let it be a little bit more fluid, more natural. Twice more, chin up and chin down. Bring the head back through center. We'll start by taking the head off to the right. And then slowly through center, head off to the left. Continue side to side. You might even stretch the eyes a little bit, so maybe you're gazing back behind you as you move the head right to left. Once more in each direction. Come back through center, now we'll make a circle. So just drawing a circle, it's like you have a an eraser on the tip of your nose and you're trying to circle with that eraser. So you notice here too, if the neck feels kind of crunchy, if it's making sound, something to observe. If it feels tight on one side and, and looser on the other, another piece of information. Two more circles in this direction and then we'll change direction. Okay, so coming back, circling out opposite direction. One more circle all the way around in the second direction. Now we'll move down into the shoulder. So we'll take the arms out wide. And it's just like you're reaching from one side to the other. So you're moving laterally. So if you can just 
concentrate that lateral movement across the chest, across the shoulders. So you're really reaching through each fingertips to move the shoulders side to side off the center axis. One more time in each direction. And let's actually relax our hands and we'll move through a seated cat cow. So chest forward, rolling the chest in, kind of like concave through the heart, pressing the chest forward. So your seated cat cow back and forth. One more time back and forth and then we'll see if we can put that all together and we'll make a big circle. So you can bring your arms back out wide to the side. Start by reaching off to your right, rolling the chest through center, and then reaching off to your left, and then rolling back. So you're kind of concave. See so if you can lead with the, with the chest, the upper back, rolling around in a circle. Right, forward, left, back. One more time. You can relax the arms for a moment if you need. We're gonna change the direction. So we'll start by stretching out off towards your left, rolling the chest through center, reaching off to your right, and then concave, rolling back, and continue with that circle. It's just like you're isolating the movement of the torso, mobilizing the shoulders. One more time all the way around. Shoulders might get a little burny, achy. This is a good sign. Muscles are starting to come online and fire. Let's relax that. We'll come into the wrist. So make like a really loose fist. And I'll come a little bit closer for this. You can stay seated. So it's like you're making a really loose fist. And I think to Karate Kid, most of us have probably seen that, like painting the fence. So you're flexing the wrist up and then extending the wrist down. Just nice and slow and soft. Twice more. And last little bit here. So now we'll take it side to side. So try to keep your fist pointing down. And it's kind of like as if you were playing a stringed instrument, just side to side. Now see if we can make that into a circle. Keeping the fist facing down, knuckles forward, tops of the wrist up towards the ceiling. You're just circling out. Opposite direction. Twice more. And then relax that, shake it out. Last little bit of seated work. We'll now start to mobilize the hips. So we'll take a two 90 degree angles. It doesn't matter which side you're gonna start on because we will do both sides. So I have two 90 degree angles ankle, knee, hip, same with the front leg. And then see if you can, that back leg, pick up that knee and stretch it a little bit more away from your hip. And then bring your fingertips forward over that front shin. So it's kind of like as if you were gonna set up maybe into this modified pigeon, but we're not folding forward right now. Big breath in, left the chest and heart. Breath out, just stay for a moment. And then we'll switch sides. So knees are gonna rotate off to the opposite side. Can you create those two 90 degree angle shapes? Pick up that back knee, extend it out away from the hip. Fingertips forward in front of that front shin, lift up through the heart. Breath in, breath out. So now we're gonna move this side to side. So hands rainbow forward, knees and hips change direction. Pause and breathe in. And then again, back to the opposite side. 
making sure you're pausing, growing tall, breathing in, making that connection. And continue, find your own pace. We'll just be here for a few moments longer. And twice more each direction. <clears throat> When we think about um, some of our central blueprint shapes in our vinyasa practice, like some of the really deep squats, we do the deep seats and um, our warrior stances. This is going to be really helpful in finding a more stable, strong stance. Mobilizing those hip joints, hip flexors, glutes, outer IT band. Really helpful with that stuff. All right, so release out of that, come to cat cow. Just start to find um, the arch of the spine up and down in your cat and cow. And you can let your head get involved with this. Good, now come back through a neutral spine, start to draw big circles with the torso. Maybe create a little soft bend in the elbows as you do this and let it be a little bit more relaxed. And change directions if you have not already, opposite way. <clears throat> Keep tapping into your breath. All right, so we'll curl the toes under, move the hips back towards the heels, extend the arms forward. You're in an active child pose. So in an active child pose, you're pressing into the ball ends of your feet. You're opening up the soles of the feet by keeping the toes curled under. And then as you stretch the arms forward, you're pressing the hands down, but you're lifting up through the forearms, the elbows, and the triceps. So it's almost like as if you were bearing weight through your hands and downward facing dog. Big breath in, big breath out. On um, earlier this week, I introduced that kind of modified reverse engineered vinyasa and I'll show it again today. So as you breathe in, elbows are gonna come wide. You're gonna pull your heart forward. See if you can keep your chest low. You lengthen out, press the arms straight, lift the chest up. You can keep the toes curled under if that feels okay and lift the knees away from the ground, but do stay strong through the legs. Press into the hands, lift the hips up, and then you find down dog. So pause here in down dog for a few moments. Let that be exploratory. You can bend your knees. You can adjust your hands and feet. Find the breath. Ujjayi. So listening to the sound of the breath and feeling that texture at the back of the throat. Two more breaths in your first down dog. And we'll move through that vinyasa a few times just to kind of get familiar with that movement because anytime, anytime we're introducing a new kind of flow body mechanics, it's always going to feel awkward. And it, all it takes is just some repetition. And in, in repetition, we build muscle memory and then it becomes more fluid. So it takes practice. Shift forward, soften the knees to the mat, keep the toes curled under, hips to the heels. Active child pose, relax your head, breath in, breath out. Now, as you inhale, elbows come wide, 
keep the chest low, keep the toes curled under, press the arms straight, lift the knees if that feels okay. And so you're in this modified upward facing dog. It's modified because I'm not on the tops of my feet, I'm actually on the ball lines of my feet. Press through the hands, lift the hips up, down dog. Settle into down dog, two breaths here. In and out through the nose. Okay, we'll move through that vinyasa twice more, shifting forward, soften the knees to the mat. Hips to the heels, find that child's pose, stay active through the hands and the feet. Inhale. Exhale. On your inhale, pull your heart forward, elbows wide, chest stays close. And then press through the hands, straighten out through the arms, lift the chest. Stay strong through those hands. So really press through the inner mound of the hand, the thumb and the index finger to lift the hips up and find down dog. So this last round, I'll ask you to begin whenever you're ready. See if you can utilize your breath to guide you through. And just doing what you can remember. If you forget something, if it feels a little awkward, again, this is a practice and it takes time and repetition to build that muscle memory. We'll meet back in down dog. Pausing there, breathing in. Breathing out. From downward facing dog, walk your feet forward. Find Uttanasana, your forward fold. And let your Uttanasana, let your feet be um, just a little bit wider than normal. So at our hip width distance. Be generous with the back body, bend the knees. Let your head be heavy. Another opportunity to check in with the neck, the shoulders, and the whole length of the spine. So just remembering that Uttanasana is not all about the hamstrings or the backs of the legs. Really, it's about checking of the whole posterior chain of the body, the whole back body. Press down into your feet. Walk the fingertips up the shins, lengthen the heart forward, find that halfway lift. Okay, so your choice here, hands can come to the heart or fingertips to the head, elbows wide, pressing into the feet and pulling the back body straight up to standing. And then relax the arms. So we'll do a little bit of work for our feet and ankles and then we'll start to really flow through our practice. I'll turn to face you so you can see what I'm doing with my feet. I'm just bringing my heel bones together and my toes out wide. It's like I have a little pie shape between my feet. Hands to the low belly. Close the eyes. So what we're going to do now is check back in with proprioception, our awareness of our body and space and time. So shift the weight forward onto that big toe mound. Almost like you're going to fall forward, but you're not going to let yourself fall forward. Just shifting off of that central axis of the spine. Now shift the weight back to the heels. Almost like you might fall backwards, but you won't. Well, one more time, forward. And back. And then feel that central, central place where you'll root through all four points of the feet and grow tall. And having your feet placed like this, you might feel a little bit more wobbly than usual. This is normal. One more breath in, breath out. Blink the eyes open, separate the heels so feet are parallel, relax your arms. Okay, so for the feet, we'll take the right foot forward and internally rotate those right toes towards the midline of the body. And you're gonna shift forward onto the outer edge of that right foot. 
and then back to the sole of the foot. So you're just shifting, rolling out and back in. And so you're opening up the lateral part of that right ankle, you know, mindfully, if you've rolled your ankle recently, be gentle. This kind of range of motion and mechanical movement of the ankle is natural and actually helpful for preventing further injury in ankle rolls in the future. Okay, so bring your right foot back into its place, left foot forward, turn those toes in, roll to the outer edge of the ankle, back to the sole of the foot. And I'm kind of letting my hips move like out to the side a little bit. I'm letting my hips be a little bit more mobile in this. You can explore that too. Okay, so come back to the feet underneath the hips. And now we'll um, take a wide stance actually. So it's like you're gonna come forward into a forward fold, but you, you aren't actually going to do that. <laughs> Bend into your left knee, keep your right leg straight. And then you're gonna roll to the inner edge of the right foot. Inner edge of the right foot. And so you might feel this on the inner side even. Just try to avoid, if you're going so far as you feel it on the inner edge of the knee, back out a little bit of that, don't go quite so far. Three, two, last one. Press that left leg straight and then bend the right knee. Second side, roll to the inner edge of the foot. Stay with your breath here. Same thing, noticing along the inner edge of the leg where you're feeling sensation, try to avoid that on the inner knee joint. For three, two, last one. Okay. And then now we'll bring the feet back underneath the hips. We'll get the top of the ankle and then we'll move on. So right foot's gonna come back and I'm just gonna show you here, you're gonna point the toe. So you're gonna be on the top of the foot and internally rotate, place the foot down onto the mat. I'll turn to the side so you can get a sense of how far apart my feet are. And then make sure your feet are wide enough so that you still have some balance. Okay, so again, we're working with the lateral side of the ankle. You might feel it there. And you're just gonna bounce a little bit. You can bend both knees, soft bounce. Deep breath, it really doesn't take much, especially for me, I feel this very intensely in my, ankles. Now pick up that right foot and point it straight back behind you so you're more on the top of the foot. And same thing, just a little soft bounce. Breath in, breath out. Good. And back through center, place that right foot down, pointing left toes internally rotate, bring the foot back behind you. Bend a little bit into both knees, softly bounce, very gentle. Okay, so same thing, we're just gonna turn the toes straight back behind us, so you're on the very top of the foot and a little soft bounce. Stay with your breath. Good, release that. You can shake out both feet, sway the body a little bit side to side. <clears throat> Good, now we're gonna come back to the top of the mat, bring the feet to parallel, toes pointing straight forward. And we'll move through vinyasa. I want you to think back to that painting of the fence action. We're gonna try that with a squat. So bring the hands forward, stretch them out just out of the shoulders and face the palms to the floor. Take a big breath and grow tall. Stay rooted through your heel bones. Exhale, bend the knees, sink the hips. And so you're only going far as far into the squat as you can by maintaining the heels on the floor. Now flip your palms to face upward and really slow like a count of five. I'm all the way up to standing. 
three, four, five. And then exhale, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, plant the hands, step your way into downward facing dog. In your down dog, your hips are lifting, your head is relaxing. Your arms are actively engaged, really strong, pressing through all 10 fingertips. Breath in. Breath out. I'll give you the option of choosing that modified vinyasa so you could come to the knees, find that active child pose. You could also skip this all together if you're craving just a little more stillness. But if you like, elbows wide, pull the heart forward, lengthen out. Stay with the toes curled under as you find that upward facing dog modified. Pressing through the hands, lifting the hips back up, down dog. Pause and breathe. Inhale, right leg lift. Exhale, right foot steps forward. Bring your left knee to the mat and really shorten up that stance. So remember those 290 degree angles that we made at the beginning of class? Same thing here. Closer your right foot is to your left knee, the easier this is gonna be. This is a modified low lunge. It's actually called Ardha Bhujangasana. Right toes slightly turn out to the right side. And then from here, you're gonna shift the hips down and forward. So right knee is even gonna move beyond that ankle. And eventually with practice as the hips open up, the hamstring of the right leg can relax onto that right calf. Relax your arms here. Option to lift the chest, lift the gaze. Breath in. Breath out. Hands come down, curl your left toes under. We're gonna turn all the way to the back of the mat. Right knee to the mat. Okay, so same thing, second side. Your knees are two 90 degree angles. Turn your left toes out a little. And then from there, you can shift the hips down and forward. Front thigh, kind of resting towards the calf. Arms relax. Maybe the chest, the chest lifts, maybe the gaze lifts. Deep breath in. Deep breath out. Good, so from here, plant the palms, make your way into downward facing dog. Pause here, breathe. Option to move through that modified vinyasa if you're enjoying it, or you could skip it or take anything else you like. You're moving through the modified vinyasa, elbows wide as you pull the heart forward. And then finally, we'll meet together in downward facing dog. Relax your head. Let's take three breaths. Inhale, left leg sweeps up and back. We're gonna come right back into where we just left off, left foot forward, right knee down. Short, low lunge here. Toes turn out to the side as you shift the hips down and forward, relaxing your arms, lifting the gaze, lifting the chest. Breath in. Breath out, hands down, quarter turn. Well, 80, 180 degree turn all the way to the back of the top of the mat, left knee down. Same thing, low lunge, Ardha Bhujangasana, right toes slightly out to the side as the hips shift down and forward, arms relax. I should have mentioned this before, but if that left, if the knee that's down on the mat needs some extra padding, feel free to slide a blanket under there. Always feel free to modify and add props as you need for your body. Okay, hands down. And this time we're gonna step the left foot forward to meet the right foot. So you're coming into Uttanasana at the top of your mat. <clears throat> Relax your head. 
top of the mat, forward fold. All right, fingertips to shins, halfway lift. Your choice here, hands to the heart or fingertips to the back of the head, elbows wide, pressing through the feet, standing up tall. Reach the arms forward, straight out of the shoulders, palms face the floor. Keep your heel bones rooted, bend your knees, start to lower into this squat. <clears throat> You're only going as far as you can while maintaining contact with the heels. Now flip your palms up really slow. Five, standing up, four, keep it steady, three, two, one, relax your arms. <clears throat> Let's add on, inhale, arms sweep up. Exhale, fingertips trace the midline as you fold back in. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, hands plant this time. You can step right into high plank. So if you want to try that modified vinyasa from high plank and the knees lifted, elbows just go wide as you pull the heart forward and up. And then hips lift. It's a little bit of a modified chaturanga, right? Normally chaturanga, we're not instructing the elbows to go wide, but it's something to play with and see how that works in your body. Let's meet in down dog, two breaths here. All right, so we'll lift the right leg up and back. Bend that right knee, move it towards the right tricep or elbow, pause there, squeeze. You're gonna stay exactly as you are, except for shift that right thigh close to the chest so it's like right in the center of your body. Squeeze, hug it in, and then plant that right foot down. This time, set the left knee down Come to the top of the left foot and pop up onto your fingertips and see if you can lift and lower that left knee. Just the left knee lifts and lowers. So remember back to when we were opening up the ankle, we were on the top of the foot. Similar sensation. Notice how it feels in this lunge variation. One more time, lift and lower that left knee. Any amount, it doesn't have to look like mine. And let's curl the left toes under. Lift up through the torso, sweep the arms out wide. Option here to lift that left knee into a high lunge. And then on your exhale, fingertips trace the midline, elbows out wide, slowly lower, left knee to hover or touch. We'll try that just twice more. So your left knee can stay down and your arms can just do the movement or the left knee can lift and you can lower back to the mat. One more time with the breath. Good, now let's bring the hands back down. Shorten up that stair. So you might scoot that right heel back closer to the left knee, make those two 90 degree angles, turn the right toes out, Ardha Bhujangasana. Shift the hips down and forward, relax the arms, breath in, gazing up. Exhale the hands down. Okay, so this time, as we start to turn, we're gonna pause at our quarter turn. So feet stay wide, bend the knees, find your horse stance in your quarter turn. So lifting the torso, find that seat. Remember we did this work of opening up the hips, our two 90 degree angle shape, shifting side to side. Now we're gonna see how that translates here. So see if you can sit a little bit lower. And we'll just sit in our horse stance, hold and add some arms. So breathing in, gather the arms up. Breathing out, press the arms away. Gather the arms back into the chest and then press the hands down. See if you can stay low in your horse stance as you continue with the hands and the breath.
One more time through. Hands come down, heels go out, forward fold. Just a few moments in Prasarita, Padottanasana, hands underneath the shoulders, backs of the legs opening up. We'll continue on our way, take a quarter turn. You're facing the back of your mat. Step into downward facing dog from here. From downward facing dog, optional vinyasa. You're more than welcome to take what we've been working on and use that or modify it or anything else, including skipping it all together. If you were moving through a vinyasa flow, meet me in downward facing dog. Pause and settle. Two breaths. From down dog, inhale, lift your left leg up and back. Exhale, left knee towards tricep or elbow. See if you can pause and hold. Doesn't matter if the elbow and knees connect, just pause and hold. And now sweep that left side towards the midline of your body. Everything else stays the same. Hug it up into the chest and then plant the left foot down in between the hands. We'll lower the right knee down, uncurl the right toes. So you're on the top of that right foot. Come to your fingertips and just see about lifting and lowering the right knee. And that might look like a millimeter. It might even just be a thought. You might even just try to actively engage the top of the foot and the muscles around the joints of the knee and the ankle without even lifting. So it's okay. Any amount is wonderful. Any amount is good. And set that right knee back to the mat. Now we'll curl the right toes under. Lift the chest, you're still in this low lunge. We'll add the arms and then option to add that right knee lifting and lowering. So inhale, sweep the arms out wide. Maybe your right knee lifts, maybe you're in a high lunge. Your exhale, fingers trace the midline of the body as the elbows go wide and you lower back down. Continue, inhale, exhale, try that twice more, whether you're just doing the arms or you're adding the lift and lower of the right leg, all good. One more time. Set that right knee back to the mat, hands down. Shorten up the stance between right knee and left foot, 290 degree angle. Left toes turn out to the side, hips shift down and forward, Ardha Bhujangasana. Relax your arms, lift your chest, maybe your gaze. Breath in. Breath out, hands down. Quarter turn back to your right. I'm gonna come back through horse stance. All right, so feet are wide. Knees are bent, torso lifts. Now in your horse stance, you might play with Often it's instructed with toes out and heels in, knees in the same direction as the toes. You might play with trying a more parallel stance. So maybe the feet become more parallel or somewhere in between that. See if you can sink the hips a little bit lower. And now we'll take the hands to the waist or hands to the heart, or here's my favorite option, hands crossing across the chest. Just lift your right heel up. See if you can stay low in your seat. Let your right heel come back down. Left heel up and back down. Side to side a few times. One more time on each side. 
both heels down. Recommit to that low seat. See if you can lift both heels up. And then relax both heels. Just lifting the heels up and down. Again, any amount is fine. It doesn't have to be high lift. It could be a millimeter, centimeter, inch, whatever. One more time, lift and lower. Now press the heel bones out so that your feet are parallel, forward fold, prasarita. Relax your head. Couple breaths in your forward fold with wide legs. We'll take a quarter turn back to the top of the mat. Slide the left foot forward to meet the right foot. Forward fold, Uttanasana. Fingertips walk to the shins, halfway lift, breathe in. You know your choices here, hands to heart or elbows wide. Press through the feet to stand up. Stretch the arms forward, straight out of the shoulders, palms face down. Okay, option here to take that heel bones together, feet out as you find that squat. So this variation, your heel bones are definitely gonna lift. See if you can keep the heel bones touching though. And then as you're ready to stand back up, palms facing up, nice and slow, heel bones relax. Okay, relax the arms. Option to take it through one more vinyasa. We'll make our way all the way into child's pose. So forward folding as you exhale. And then taking it through whatever way you like to make your way all the way into child pose. Take your time getting there. Take some time in child's pose to feel the connection of the physical body resting against the floor, the mat, so that stable surface beneath you. So really getting grounded, noticing the texture of whatever is in contact with your skin. Notice the temperature. So we'll have some time to invert. We'll have our inversion practice now. So you can lean back on your heels. Or if you are going to take your legs up and over your head for your inversion practice, you can move your mat up against the wall, some stable surface behind you. So we've been practicing Shalamba Sarvangasana. I always get those mixed up. It's Salamba. Shirshasana, headstand. Okay, so, and you don't have to come all the way upside down to have a really great practice with this. But what I want you to be sure of is that you're making this stable, strong foundation first. Your elbows are in line with your shoulders. Your hands are interlaced to the webbing. And you're making this cradle at the back of your head so that the top of your head is resting squarely on the mat. Okay, so if you're getting ready to set up for that, find that position with the hands. If that's not gonna work for you today, take a restorative inversion, legs up the wall or legs draped over the edge of a chair or couch. If you are ready to come to explore this a little bit further, make that handprint, that um, blueprint of that triangle on the mat, curl the toes under, lift the hips up, Walk the feet forward any amount. And you start to feel that weight transfer. 
So you might even first just play as coming onto the tippy toes. It's almost a feeling like you're gonna somersault forward. And when you're first learning this, maybe you do somersault forward a few times. And this is just about, again, finding where that central axis of the spine is. So as you feel the weight shift into the tippy toes, and you feel like you might want to lift a leg and transition that weight over the triangle of your elbows, your wrists, the top of your head. You can lift one leg and then the other, or maybe you're already all the way upside down, which is great if you're there. Think about a long neck, shoulders shrugging away from the ears. So in this case, the shoulders are reaching for the ceiling. And if you're upside down and it's feeling good, stay for about five breaths if possible. And if you're working through those little drills, take a break, take child's pose. Or maybe you're just done with those little drills. When I say little drills, I mean you're creating that, um, just the foundation first. You're feeling what it feels like to make that triangle. You're feeling what it feels like to shift the weight onto the head. You're feeling what it feels like to walk the feet forward and lift the hips. You're upside down, start to make your way out. The first thing you're gonna come into is child's pose. You try to avoid this desire to pop right up out of your headstand. Make the connection forehead to tangible surface and your child's pose can be anything you want it to be, any modification you'd like. Hands can reach back towards the feet, arms can stretch forward. Maybe explore a combination of those two things. Couple more breaths here. From child pose, we'll just briefly come into downward facing dog, just to open up the back body. You can curl the toes, lift the hips, relax the head. And we'll come back to that 290 degree angle shape with the legs. So kind of like you're setting up for pigeon, send your right knee forward. But instead of sinking all the way into it, traditional pigeon, I want you to take that front right shin and make it parallel with the top edge of your mat, ankle in line with the knee, knee in line with the ankle. Same thing with the back leg, okay? And then see if you can extend that left leg out to the side, walk the fingertips forward in front of that shin, that right shin, breathe in, and then breathe out, maybe you forward fold a little bit. It's okay to just stay in that upright seat if, that what, if that's what the body is asking you to do. It's really easy to roll all the weight off into that right hip, um, which is fine because what pigeon is working towards is opening up that the, all those big stabilizer muscles of the glute and the hip. We we'll want to avoid the pressure on the knee, which is why I like this approach to it. If that's starting to feel really open and accessible and you want to add on, you can walk that left leg back and extend onto the top of the left leg. But try not to compromise that front shin at all, the position of the knee, the ankle, and the hip. Take about three slow, deep breaths here.
Okay, so if you're in a forward fold over that front shin, walk up to your hands, lift up through the chest. If you've extended your back leg, bend that left knee. Clasp, lift the knees up, roll over the feet, rotating to the back of your mat now. Left shin parallel with the short edge of your mat. Right knee, see if you can reach it a little bit further away from the hip. You're creating, again, that 90 degree angle with the back leg as well. And it's gonna feel awkward to sit upright, but see if you can get a little bit more weight shifted into the midline of the body and then walk the fingertips forward over that shin. Pause here, breathe in. And then if the body says it's okay, you can walk forward and fold into this. Any amount is fine. Props are great here. If you have blocks at home or pillows or blankets to stack underneath the chest or the forehead. Feel free to use those. Notice where you're feeling sensation. And if this is feeling really good, open and accessible, you might extend your right leg back. See if you can come to the top of the right thigh if you're doing that. Right side and left side tend to be really different for most of us. So if that's not gonna work on this side, just honor that, don't force it. Go three more breaths here, soften in, relax. So if you're in this forward fold, press into your hands, lift the torso away from the floor. I'm gonna come back to the top of our mat and lay down on the belly. And lengthen the legs out behind you. You might make a little pillow with the backs of the hands underneath the forehead, elbows wide. We'll put all these movements together. We'll, um, we'll have a little bit of a twist, opening for the shoulders and for the hips. And start by taking your left elbow wide out to the side and make that 90 degree angle with the wrist, the elbow and the shoulder. But then slide your left hand forward a little bit so the elbow is slightly above the shoulder. Place your right palm underneath your right shoulder. Look at your right fingertips. Press into that right hand. You're gonna roll on to the left side body. You can bend that right knee and plant the foot. So before we find a static hold, we're gonna pass from side to side. So we're gonna do that exact same thing on the second side. You're gonna come back onto your belly, change out the elbows. So right elbow out to the side, slightly above that right shoulder. Left palm underneath the left shoulder, you're looking at your left hand as you roll onto the right side body. Bending the knee, planting the foot. And then you can start to move this side to side. Go slow. Each time you pass from side to side to so that elbow that's coming out to the side, make sure it's not going below the shoulder. So that way you get across the front of the chest, the big pectoral major minor muscles. You're not stretching the anterior ligament of the shoulder joint inadvertently. That's why it's important to get the elbow high, higher than the shoulder. 
One more time to each side. And then I'll invite you to find a static hold on that first side. We move the elbow of the left arm out to the side. We rolled onto the left side body. And then with your right leg, which is the top leg, you can bend the knee and plant the foot if that feels good. You can just stack the legs. You can sweep the leg behind you. Feel free to explore that. And even if you want like a quad stretch on that right leg, you can bend the knee, reach back for the outer ankle with that right hand. Open up through the quad. Three breaths here. Start to really slowly unwind onto the belly. Pause for a breath on the belly. Now second side, right elbow wide above the shoulder. Press into your left hand to roll onto the right side body. Again, so just acknowledging differences right to left, let them be different. If they need to be different, let them be. Anything you want with that top left leg, it can be a quad stretch, it can be more of a twist for the spine, it can be more of a hip opener. It's just a matter of exploring what that left leg does, what shape it takes. Three deep breaths here. When you're ready, slowly unwind back onto the belly. Pausing on the belly, elbows wide, palms underneath the forehead. Okay, so from here, we're going to start to head into our final shape of Shavasana, and that might look different for all of us. So you're more than welcome to stay here on your belly, belly down Shavasana. If you're familiar with that restorative shape, you can add props underneath the body to support. If you prefer to come onto the back, go ahead. If you prefer an upright seated meditation, Go ahead. Always an invitation to make that last shape really and truly your own. have five minutes for Shavasana and I'll let you know when that's finished so that you can join me for our final pranayama if you feel inclined for that. 
are settling in, relaxing shoulders away from the ears, and slightly tilting the chin towards the chest. Taking a breath in through the nose, out through the mouth, relaxing the jaw, the teeth, the tongue, relax the gums, the lips, everything softens and relaxes. Let the eyes sink heavy into their sockets. The flesh around the eyes softens and releases. If you're enjoying your Shavasana, please feel free to stay longer. If you'd like to join me for Pranayama, start to awaken through fingertips and toes. Move your head side to side. If you're on your back, sweeping your arms up and overhead and breathing into the length of your body. Bending your knees and rolling off to a side fetal position. Pressing into your hands, rising up to a comfortable seat. Let your seat be supported for pranayama. For pranayama, we'll do a full round of Nadi Shodhana. So our Surya Bedna is like our half Nadi Shodhana just a reminder, Nadi Shodhana, one full round is inhaling through the right, closing left, close right, exhale left, inhale left, 
Close left, exhale right. So it's like you're drawing a triangle with your breath. Okay. Taking the right hand up to crescents of the nose. Let your elbow draw in. Let your right shoulder relax. Slightly tilt your chin to your chest. Press the back of the head to the space behind you. Begin Nadi Shodhana. Close left nostril. Inhale right. Close right nostril, exhale left. Inhale left. Close left, exhale right. That's one round, we'll do three more. Inhale right. Close right, exhale left. Inhale left. Closing left, exhaling right. That's two rounds. Inhale right. Close right, exhale left. Inhale left. Close left, exhale right. That was three rounds. So this last fourth round, please try it on your own, beginning when you're ready. You're ending your pranayama by breathing out through right nostril, relaxing the right hand. Keeping the eyes closed for a moment. Breath neutral through both nostrils. So that resonance of pranayama, breath, energy, moving through the body. Left palm flat against the heart, right palm stacks on top, bowing the chin into the chest, taking a moment to honor your effort, honor your practice. Drawing your attention and awareness inward, making a connection to the seat of the soul, anahata, the heart. With reverence and gratitude to our practice and all of our teachers, past, present, future, to the teacher within your own heart. Namaste.